Hey, what's going on? It's Jason Lucchese and welcome back to the channel. I am so glad you're here. If you are brand new, make sure you like, hit, and subscribe to our channel. We would love to have you here so that you get notified of brand new videos just like this. Now today, we're gonna be covering some important information, but before I dive into that, I've got Mr. Michael Brethauer alongside me. Mike, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, Jason. Glad to be here again. Uh, obviously, last video I did, I was in my home office and you were not there, so it might have confused a little few people, but uh, right now we're back together. Yeah, absolutely, man. And we've got uh, an important topic to talk about here. We've got some bumpy waters ahead. Now, this has nothing to do with like the presidential election or anything like that. We're here to talk about the potential opportunity that we're going to be seeing for investors here in 2021. And this is going to be the opportune time to get yourself prepared and make sure you stay on until the very end. We've got a very important document that we want to give you that's going to be related to the topic that we're talking about on today's video, which is going to be how you can get yourself prepared for a huge, like a gigantic wave of short sales, short sale opportunities. So what does that mean? That means pre foreclosure opportunities. And for some people that don't know how to do the short sales or for banks that want to go extremely fast on the foreclosure, it could turn into REO opportunities. So on this particular video, we're not going to be covering the REO aspect, but we're going to be covering the short sale aspect because the game has changed drastically from when you were able to submit short sales in, let's just say 2009, 2010 ish. So right now, because of the CARES Act, and if you're unsure of what the CARES Act is, that is the Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar with that, it was basically giving a $2 trillion economic stimulus to us, to Americans across the country. And for that, when you were able to get that particular stimulus in there, homeowners were able to file for what's called a forbearance and i'm covering something here that we have on an article that was just recently released with some important data that we're going to talk about so that you can get yourself prepared for how to go and find the homeowners uh what kind of conversations to have with them but mike you know i think 09 2010 2011 ish you were you know you had your real estate license we were doing a ton of short sales at the time you know, what's what's some of the things that people could, you know, be on the lookout for? Because we were doing at that time yellow letters and we were getting massive response rates. People needed help. And we're, we're kind of seeing the same thing brewing up right now. Like unemployment rates are really high. We're seeing uh, individuals not being able to afford their mortgages. Everything that's happening right now is it's, it's very similar to what was happening back in 2009. Like you said, when when the phone was lighting up with tons of people who were needing help with their short sales. And it was much like kind of what we've come across with our tax delinquent now, people that are calling, that were calling back then because they had no clue what options were available to them. They were very scared and confused. The market was shifting dramatically in a very negative direction and, and they had no way of out of it. And, and here they sat with this property that was dragging them down. So they were just, they were very confused and they were looking for options. So right now we're starting to see that a lot of these folks with, you know, even with things being postponed, the moratorium on things, even here, like in Indiana, uh, our tax sale was postponed until March. So even with the moratorium and everything, we're still getting phone calls very similar to that we did back in 2009, 2010, where people are just curious, hey, I'm falling behind. I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, they kind of see the writing on the wall situation. Absolutely. And, and right now, you know, Mike, you hit the nail on the head. Once that forbearance option, you know, is done, it expires, which is going to be happening here. Uh, towards the end of March 2021, you could probably get in right now and start helping some folks. But according to CoreLogic right here, the the difference is there's a 2.9 percentage points from a year ago with individuals that are in delinquency. That's a huge thing. We're at 6.6% of individuals that are in a delinquent state with their mortgage. So right now I'm going to I'm going to give you some data. So 30 to 59 days delinquent, that's 1.6% of all mortgages across the country. 60 to 89 days delinquent, 0.8%. So not not too entirely big, but this is going to be the the big number. 90 plus days. This is when the banks can start doing notice of defaults. They could start filing foreclosure judgments with the county to start moving the process along to where it could go to REO. That number, Mike, is at 
1.3%. That's a huge number. That's mortgages all across the country. So 150 plus days, that's at 1.2%. So these numbers are huge. Well, let's take a look at that percentage and break it down. I like that you said that it's across the whole country because think about this. A lot of people, I get on the phone, we schedule blueprint calls and we'll put the link right there uh, if you want to schedule time and talk to us about building out your blueprint in your business. But when we take these calls, a lot of times the question I get is, you know, where do you guys get your leads from? You're talking about 30 plus lead sources. I have a lead problem. I can't find leads. Right here, we're telling you there's a huge percentage. If, I mean, it doesn't seem like a huge number, 4%. It's not a huge number. But when you talk about the entire country, that means everybody that calls us and when I, everybody that I've gotten on the phone with and they're talking about their leads, there is somebody in you're in a market where you're going to find a whole bunch of these. Yeah, we're, we're going to see that that number is more than likely going to increase because as of right now, this is also including individuals that are in forbearance, but that number is going to also it's gonna it's gonna go up dramatically so i'm gonna see that those numbers especially that 90 plus days part that's gonna start increasing the 60 to 89 days is going to drastically increase and the data like i was saying it comes from core logic core logic basically is one of the top data providers and i'm gonna go over some stuff as well from adam data because they also are one of the top data providers as well that they can they're basically finding out through credit history, credit reporting uh, from the actual banks, how they're able to get this information. Because as of right now, not a lot of notice of defaults are being filed, especially in a lot of key states across the country. So one of the things that you could start preparing yourself for is getting that data. Now, getting the data, I wouldn't recommend getting it from like a software or anything like that, because Mike, most of the time, these datas, these data providers, like, and I, I'm not saying like the, these companies are bad, like PropStream or uh, RealFlow or FreedomSoft. I'm not saying these companies are bad. They're some of PropStream uh, has some good data, and they have a lot of other good tools as well. They have a lot of good tools. But Jason, you and I have gone back and forth when it comes to data because not not just for ourselves, just because we wanted better data. We want, and we have stuff that's brewing up right now. I'm sure we're going to talk about more here in the upcoming videos on some new data sources that we've been diving into that are bringing in more higher results, you know, return on, uh, you know, as far as response rates and actual accuracy on that data than we've ever seen before. But you and I have gone back and forth on data for so, uh, so long and, and, and so deep into it because yeah, a lot of places they're getting, they're not getting bad data. It's just outdated. It's old. It's, it's old data and you know what, what good is that if they change their number or if they change their address or whatever name changes whatever that doesn't really help you very much so you got to be very careful because again first you you invested into the data that was your first investment well the big point there is like i know a lot of these data providers now outside of real flow freedom soft these are crms so these are going to be outside of providing data but from my from my standpoint and from talking to a lot of the owners the data is updated maybe once a year that's not going to be the most accurate now we do have a data provider that we're able to get data updated once a month if you would like to know who that data provider is now there's just strictly data providers you know you're not going to have a software you're not going to have you know the crm platform but you are going to have the best data possible if you would like to know that, drop a comment below. We'll hit you up with information so that you could go check it out for yourself. Now, before I hop into another topic here, I want to read this to you. This is from the president of, of CoreLogic and the CEO from Frank Martell. He says, the forbearance programs continue to reduce the flow of homes into foreclosure and distressed sales and have been the key to helping many families who have been particularly hit by the pandemic. Even though the foreclosure rates are at historic low, the spike in 150 day past due loans points to bumpy waters ahead. Very bumpy waters ahead is from what that is happening here. So Mike, we're seeing that the short sales are gonna be a thing again, more than likely. Uh, folks hop onto it now and get themselves prepared, get them 
themselves into a spot to where uh, they have the education on knowing exactly what to say to the counties, like when you're calling and talking and trying to find that data, because it's, it's simple. You could actually go down to the county right now, gather the information that is needed, and you could pull the list yourself. Do you need a software? Do you need some you know, monthly expense? No, you don't. You can actually go and get this information yourself from the actual county. Mike and I, you know, back uh, when we were doing a lot of these, we would go and get those lists directly from the county. And then we were able to start tapping into some of the data providers. But Mike, we would go down there and does it cost you money to do that? No, actually, we've, we have had some fun times. I remember the very first time we went to the county and pulled up some of that information and some of these old books <laughs> they would have at the county office. You'd go in there and there'd be shelves and, you know, of these old books. You'd open them up and you, you would look like they were these old vintage books. No, they were still being used. That's where they kept the public records. Yeah. And now with everything pretty much online, I, I don't even really see a lot of counties not really online right now, but you could go online. You don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. You could go on and get that data yourself. And now you could have a list. Now, one of the things that I wanted to share with you, some of the most impacted areas, according to Adam Data Solutions, and we're gonna give you this link, this article that I'm using right now to let you know some of the information. We'll, we'll put it down. I'll pin this in the comment section. So if you guys wanna check this information out yourself, highly recommend it. So big areas that are getting hit right now, Miami. 12% of all loans in the Miami area. New York, this isn't a surprise, uh, 11%. Las Vegas, 10%. Houston, 10%. Chicago, 8%. That, that's, those are staggering numbers. That's all mortgages in that area. 8%, that is really, that's a big, big number there. We're gonna see that the bottom line here is foreclosures are coming. The, and most of these folks, they need help because I don't see us being able to have, you know, some of the programs like the the options that were given back in like 09, 2010, 2011, some of the, the programs that were out. I, I personally think they were complete garbage. Uh, most of the time they didn't even work, Mike. Remember the, the couple that we were we went and visited with and they were trying to get a loan modification. And the whole time, most folks don't even realize this but the foreclosure is still going. That clock is still going. And at the end of the day, those folks ended up calling us back. They had about 15 days left. They got denied. The bank knew exactly what they were doing. I, I think the banks are going to do the same exact thing There was again. a lot of people hanging on to that false soap. Like, oh, they're going to modify my loan. This problem is going to go away. Uh, this, this situation is going to get taken care of. I'm not going to lose the house. Everything's going to be fine. But then, you know, leg sweeping, carpet pulling underneath time. It, it happens. Um, and the, these folks were, you know, uh, probably early 60s ish and they were unemployed. They were receiving unemployment checks. They were trying to get work. And it's very similar to what's going on right now, minus the pandemic. It was a nice house. I mean, it wasn't like a, a fancy or super nice house, but it was it was a decent house in a decent area. Didn't need a whole lot of work or anything. It was just these people in a very unfortunate situation that, again, they were holding on to these beliefs that, hey, this is going to go away. The system's going to help me. You know, there are things in place to prevent me from losing my house. Yeah, there is one thing in place that prevents you from losing your house, and that's paying the bill. Now, outside of that, you cannot count on. Yeah, there are programs in place. They show up. They do provide aid. But you, these are not things you can count on. Right. And a, and a lot of these programs that we're talking about, like the loan modification programs, they just simply failed homeowners. And it was because I, I think this was something completely brand new. Uh, the mortgage industry, the bankers, they just weren't ready for, for what, what happened back then. Now, what happened then is going to be completely different to now because you got to factor in this pandemic. Uh, we're, we're seeing people right now unemployed. Uh, we're seeing divorce rates at all time highs. We're seeing individuals that aren't able to make their mortgage payments due to unemployment. We don't have any other stimulus as of right now that's been uh, agreed upon through government. Uh, they just can't come to sides. So I, I don't see people being able to catch up on their mortgage well, payments. Even, and even if they did, even if another stimulus package came in right now, Jason, let's just say for argument's sake right now, politics all aside, let's, the president, we're not going to name any names. The president says another stimulus is on its way. What is that really going to do? I'll tell you this. If it does get approved, it's not going to do a whole lot because think about it, Mike. 
$1,200 really doesn't go a whole long way. Now, even if you do have a spouse and you get another $1,200, you're talking $2,400. Let's just say you have three kids. So we're talking low 3000s. Most people aren't going to use that to get caught back up on their payments because at this point, you might be six, seven payments behind. If you go and use that money towards your, your mortgage, you, a lot of people think that's going to get, get you caught back up, but it's not. Unless you pay the amount that's owed, it, what's going to happen is it's going to come back to, to bite you in the rear end. So what I would do is if you are in one of those spots, go talk to an attorney, see if they can negotiate that balance down for you if you really do want to stay in the house. But short selling is more than likely going to be the path for a lot of these individuals. Uh, if they don't have the money to get caught back up, we haven't seen a time like this ever to where you know we've been shut down, we had a lockdown, we have a big pandemic. Although we did have, you know, some we had the Asian flu in uh, 50, I believe it was uh, 56, and then we had the, the Korean flu in 68. We didn't shut down. We didn't have the lockdowns. So we've never seen anything like this before. Uh, obviously, we had the Spanish flu, but there wasn't like a complete lockdown like we did here uh, from March until, you know, some states were a little bit different. I think we were on complete lockdown until early June. So things have completely changed the game here and you need to get yourself prepared because, it, you know, as we pivot, as we shift and, you know, you're still going to be able to do wholesales. Uh, don't get me wrong. You could still do wholesales with short sales. And the great thing about that is there's not going to be as much deed restrictions because there's going to be so much inventory available. Now, I am kind of, you know, using a crystal ball on that. And trust me, it's, it's here. Can you see it? Exactly. It's not there. So I'm just going off of what I feel gut wise. Could this come back and bite me in the rear end? Absolutely. But the data that I just went over with you and you could, you know, go over that data yourself. I think we're going to see a big pre foreclosure and foreclosure wave coming here. Mike, why don't we go ahead, get to wrapping this up. Is there any final thoughts from you that you wanted to share before we go ahead and wrap up? I've actually was talking to somebody a little bit ago earlier today. Somebody who subscribes to the channel is a member of our community. I uh, was talking to me about some potential REO deals. It was actually, these are coming from uh, asset managers that he's sending me. Uh, 48 package, multifamily, kind of bulk package stuff. So right now is a great time. They are all they are already starting to try and get rid of this underperforming asset inventory stuff that's not going to do them any good. They're trying to get the stuff off the books preemptive to this windfall we're about to have. So now is the exact right time to start connecting with folks because you don't you don't want to be those investors that came in. 2015, 2016, thinking, oh man, these guys are catching it, cashing in great. Yeah, you missed the boat a little bit. They've got the they've got the market share, they've got all their fingers where they need to be. You're trying to play catch up and it's about five years too late. That is true. Absolutely. And you know, one of the things that I want to do is, you know, this is a really a great document for you. Um, if you go ahead and just leave a comment below that you would like this document, it's a short sale checklist. So if you would like to get this, get ahead of the curve and be able to know exactly what the banks are going to need so that you can communicate that through homeowners that, you know, you could potentially be doing short sales with, just go ahead and drop a comment below. I'll get you that document. Uh, it's, it's a way of us saying, hey, thanks for being a subscriber. Make sure you are a subscriber of the channel. But, if you know, I just want to make sure that you drop that comment. If you would like to know who we're getting our data from, just let me know that too in, in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to share that link with you. They're not like this big fancy pants company, uh, but they work throughout all 50 states and could get you the most accurate data uh, for, for your business. Because at the end of the day, if you don't have accurate data and you're sending off massive amounts of marketing, it's a lot of money getting flushed down the toilet, in my opinion. You need to have up-to-date records so that you're not wasting money so that you're making money instead of spending 10, 15, $20,000 and getting one or two deals and barely making a return on your investment. So let us know if you'd like that. And hopefully you enjoyed this information. Make sure you check the pinned comment below with the article that I've been referencing throughout this video. I want to make sure that you get prepared for what is coming so that you have no hidden roadblocks or mental roadblocks or anything standing in your way. We want to be able to give you all the tools that you need. So outside of that, hey, thanks for coming on and checking out this video today. Make sure you click that like button. 
Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little notification bell so that you get immediately notified of brand new videos just like this. But on that, thanks for joining us. And Michael, thanks for joining us today as well. I will talk to you later. Take care. Bye now.